Hi everyone, welcome to my study room. My name is Amanda Morris, and in this video, I'll be explaining the theory in chapter 27 of our book, Cultural Studies. Through our readings and through the videos we have been watching, Stuart Hall has presented the theory to us. Stuart Hall is an emeritus professor of sociology at the Open University in the UK. He has published at least four books on the ideas surrounding cultural studies and is one of the leading expert theorists today. Hall's theory argues that there is a fundamental and ideological difference between the study of the media and cultural studies, even though they really do interweave a lot. Hall has reasoned that the media highlights those persons in positions of power and uses the media to sustain their dominance. He also reasons that the media exploits the poor, therefore keeping them powerless. Stuart Hall prefaces the main context of cultural studies with his introduction to ideologies. He defines these as the mental frameworks, the languages, the concepts, the categories, and imagery of thought, and the representation, which different classes and social groups deploy in order to make sense of, define, figure out, and render intelligible the way society works. As a society, we are mostly unaware of these ideologies, and we do not realize how they impact they have, the impact that they have on our lives. For example, in United States politics, the ideologies may separate the difference between a Democrat and a Republican. Those sharing the ideology of one party over the other are likely to vote accordingly. However, many people have difficulty seeing past the two primary competing parties, and therefore, the majority of the population forgets to examine the ideologies of other parties, such as the Libertarians or the Green Party members. Hence, they are seldom elected. Hall also shares with us his belief in democratic pluralism, which is the myth that society is held together by common norms. Some of these norms are equal opportunity, respect for diversity, one person, one vote, individual rights, and the rule of law. Along with democratic pluralism, he shares his belief that communication should not be academically separated from all other fields. This would be separating the messages from the culture they inhabit. Communication is necessary in all fields, therefore the theories, modes, and ways of communication should be integrated into all subjects. In the 1970s, Stuart Hall directed the CCCS, or the Center for Contemporary Cultural Studies, and they tried to show their perceptions of the haves and the haves not, have nots. One of Hall's stated aims is to unmask the power imbalances within society. He, he validates the theory of cultural studies if it deconstructs the configuration media research establishment that we have today because it fails to deal with ideology. In the theory, Hall seeks to liberate people from the ideologies that have been instilled in us from birth. This theory raises the concern that the media is the primary preserver of the status quo. As we read in our text, Stuart Hall owes a debt to Karl Marx. The golden rule in Marx's theory that says, he who has the gold rules. In this economic structure, the middle class and the poor, who lack the capital and the means of production, must work to live. However, they get no extra benefit from the products that they produce. The bulk of the monetary gain stays with the holder of the capital and means of production, and the laborers get little to nothing. In Marx's theory on economics, as the gap between the middle class and the shareholders grow, the desperate workers will eventually overthrow the owners and create a middle class society, or they will create a classless society. A beaming example from 2012 and 2011 is the Occupy Wall Street movement that happened and continues to happen in some of the major cities in the United States. Their website gives insight into what the organization stand for, stands for. Occupy Wall Street is a people-powered movement that began on September 17, 2011 in Liberty Square in Manhattan's Financial District and has spread to over 100 cities in the United States and actions over... 1,500 cities globally. Occupy Wall Street is fighting back against the corrosive power of major banks and multinational corporations over the democratic process and the role of Wall Street in creating an economic collapse 
that has caused the greatest recession in generations. The movement aims to fight back against the richest 1% of people that are writing the rules of an unfair global economy that is foreclosing on our future. Stuart Hall relates strongly with Marx's findings. However, he does not subscribe to his brand of economic determinism. Economic determinism is the belief that human behavior and relationships are ultimately caused by differences in financial resources and the disparity in power that those gaps create. To Hall, this is an oversimplification. Hall refers to hegemony to explain why the revolution of the middle class over the rich hasn't happened yet. Hegemony is the subtle sway society's haves over its have-nots. M. Griffin explains his thoughts by saying, the result is that the role of mass media turns out to be production of content rather than a reflection of consensus that already exists. In one of Hall's books, Representation, he states that making meaning is the primary function of discourse. He goes even further to ask, where do people get their meanings? We are not predisposed to the meaning of anything. We learn what things mean through communication and discourse, or the frameworks of interpretation. For example, when you adopt a new puppy, you immediately begin to train it. Using the bathroom inside is a no-no and will result in some sort of punishment. If the puppy uses the restroom outside, he might receive a treat. He, the puppy, is learning that using the restroom inside is unacceptable. He had not been taught that through the had he not been taught that through the discourse and communication from his owners, he would feel free to do his business anywhere. Discursive formation or the process by which unquestioned and seemingly natural ways of interpreting the world become ideologies have been drawn by the people with power that define the terms normal and abnormal. This discursive formation grew into a larger discourse, therefore proving that the right to make meaning literally can make people crazy. Through his research and publications, Hall has hoped to move the study of communication away from the generic, compartmentalized focuses that we study today and move toward the unifying atmosphere in which they occur and from which they emanate, human culture. He focuses on social structure and power relations through different cultures in the world. M. Griffin simplifies what Hall is researching by saying he is stripping the study of communication away from the cultural context in which it is found and ignoring the realities of unequal power distribution in society and how they have weakened our field and made it less theoretically relevant. Hall and researchers like him want to focus on the way media represents culture and how that shows social inequality. This keeps the average person unable to voice their opinion and leaves them powerless in this corporate commoditized world. Most everything media-wise in the U.S. is produced by a corporation. Many of the channels on your TV are owned by the same large company that owns radio stations and even print media. All three of these sources combined present you with information daily that can sway your opinions on different ideas, events, and theories. They monopolize on our thoughts. They have taught us that this story is bad, this story is sad, and that other one is exciting. It is not what information is presented to us, it's who owns the information that is presented. They are the ones that mold us. These culture industries, the producers of television, radio, fashion, magazines, newspapers, they provide the information or the myths of information that shape our perception and view of the world. This leads to their overall social control. There is no fact, though, that says that people will take in and agree with the ideology presented by the media. Hall's most influential discovery was his outline of the three options of decoding the ideologies. Number one is operating inside the dominant code. The media produces the message, the masses consume it. The audience's reading of this coincides with the preferred reading produced. The number two is applying a negotiable code. The audience assimilates the leading ideology in general, but opposes its application in certain cases. The number three is substituting an oppositional code. The audience sees through the establishment bias in the media presentation and mounts an organized effort to demythologize the news. 
With all of these in mind, though, it's still hard to rationalize that the powerless can still change the system. He calls this the pessimism of the intellect. His objective, though, is to expose the media's structuring of reality. If people know that their content is not valid, or is being altered to be better received by the audience, they will know not to trust that particular source. He refers to this as the optimism of the will. All in all, Hall's most influential contribution from his research was linking communication about meaning with the communication without power, because people... The people with power can control, manipulate, and change the discourses of communication. This is the theory of cultural studies. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for watching.